So Frederick Douglass, uh, I think, fits in the libertarian tradition insofar as he was one of the great defenders of self-ownership uh, in the American uh, political tradition. So Douglass, born into slavery, uh, develops a critique of slavery and defends self-ownership as the antithesis of the slave experience. So uh, I think one of the things that's remarkable about Douglass's contribution to the tradition is that he relies on his own experiences as a slave to defend the idea of self-ownership. And he also um, reimagines previous articulations of self-ownership in a way that is uh, more comprehensive. He sort of I identifies not just the economic dimension of self-ownership, but all sorts of other aspects of, uh, of human life that he thinks are essentially protected by the idea of self-ownership. And uh, also, he has a very universal understanding of the idea. So for a 19th century thinker, um, he's quite radical in terms of applying the concept of self-ownership to, to women, to immigrants, um, and uh, obviously to African Americans. I think today the most uh, important substantive um, contribution that Douglas makes is uh, his ability to combine a kind of classical liberal concern for self-ownership with uh, a very robust sense of what human beings owe to one another. So I think um, Douglas is, uh, is a very important thinker insofar as he reminds us that the promise of liberty cannot be achieved outside of uh, strong communities where people care about one another. So I think that it's hard to apply you know, Douglas's ideas to contemporary policy issues in a, in a really concrete way, and I, I try to avoid doing that. But I do think that the spirit of his ideas, this combination of liberty and, uh, and responsibility, uh, is, is something that's relevant to just about any question of political theory and practice that, that comes up uh, today.